Hey, what's up everybody? Yesterday we talked about the price coming up and making a retracement and that's exactly what we're seeing now. So the question is, is this a B wave or is it the beginning of a new impulse to the upside? Um, that's really the question because at the end of the day we can see one, two, right? This could be three, four, and five. And it's finished. And then we have an ABC for a wave two. And now we're going up into wave three. You can also say that this is one, two, all of this is three. And now we're doing something like this for a four and then we go up for five. Problem with that is it's a little bit too big compared to the wave two. So, um, if the wave is finished, however, uh, it could still be something like, you know, uh, like a one, two, a three, four, and a five. And we have three down. Maybe we get three up, and then we get five down or three, and it becomes a flat. Basically, it's the same thing except the wave is finished and this is a wave two. Um, so there you go. I mean, we talked about it yesterday. Um, you know, it's exactly what we talked about. So it's interesting how, you know, when we see these bullish, I mean, you see this right here is a good example. See how the price is coming down, kind of chilling out sideways. I thought maybe we can get a retracement here but we, uh, or, or the opportunity was taking the low, right? But you could see this bullish hammer candle right here. You see that, how you sort of come down, build a little bit of base, and then hit the low, then you get your bullish hammer candle, and then you rip to the upside. Um, if we look at the one hour chart, it's rather impulsive, so I'm not sure if this is going to be a B wave, right? I mean, that's how strong, I mean, yesterday I was, this is what I was thinking. But the thing is, is as it comes up, we need to look at the wave structure, right? We didn't have this wave structure yesterday. Now we have it. Now we can examine it. And I have to say it's, it's pretty, pretty impulsive at the moment. Um, let's see where we are just by eyeballing it. It looks like about the 618. Let's see if I pull it down. Oh, I was wrong. Look at that, 702. I wasn't even thinking about this wick here. Let me see if I do it from the bottom. Yeah, that's a right, just above the 618. Um, but if you include the wick, we're actually breaking above the 702, which is a good thing, right? I mean, so we're pretty high up on the, on the FIB scale. So let me just draw a little zone between the 886 right there. Turn that yellow. There we go. So this is going to be the area where we got to pay attention. Now, would I buy Bitcoin right now? No. Why? Because it's too risky. Why? Because it's right in the middle of the retracement levels, right? You got point A, you got point B, and then you got point C right yesterday video we were more like point b this was like like i said dollar cost averaging buying the dip right um do i expect the price to go lower after this well let's jump into a couple altcoins here for a minute um hmm so when we look at something like theta it still looks like there's more upside to go because Bitcoin's chilling up here. So that's this is a good example of why we have to look at altcoins because you kind of want to see where the rest of the market is relative to where Bitcoin is, right? We could see Bitcoin. Let me just put it on the same screen here. You could see they both had a dump, right? This one was more significant. This one was more three wave-ish, right? Bitcoin's back to the 702 more impulsive and theta is just kind of hanging down here so does that mean what does that mean well that means to me 
that there's a likelihood uh, that theta continues doing something like that, right? So if, if it's a B wave, we only have two, one, two. We still need three, let alone four and five, right? If it's gonna break this high. So if Bitcoin, here's the thing. If Bitcoin is already back at the 702, breaking above it, and I mean, this is kind of impulsive here a little bit. Um, it could still be an ABC because I only have three, right? Look at this. I got one, two, three. I got one, two, three. And I got one, two, three. So the whole thing is an A, B, and C. Now, or W, X, Y, um, this could be one, two, three, four, five, and it can still be an ABC. But it's, it's a pretty impulsive looking ABC. So here's the thing. If theta, if, if, if theta looks to me, and I'm not just saying theta, let's look at another coin, just so we have another reference here. Let's look at, let's look at IMX. Okay, yeah, there you go. Look at IMX. Same kind of thing. Let's look at SHIB. Same thing. Let's look at CFX. Same thing. Let's look at this one. Okay, that's totally different. Um, wow, look at that. Look at that three-way move. You see that? I don't think I noticed that. If I saw that yesterday, I don't remember. But look at this. You have a flat impulse. Flat. One, two, three, four, five. Three-way pullback. One, two. This looks like it's going to break out. This is not financial advice. I could be wrong. This could go to zero, and you could lose all your money. So just be careful. Um, but to me, I mean, this looks very bullish. Look at Here's your resistance. You're cupping into the resistance. You're cupping into the resistance. You're breaking the door, breaking the door, break. You know, you're. What's that song? Breaking the law, breaking the law. It just kind of reminded me of that. But anyway, I think um, that looks like to me more upside. Does it mean today, tomorrow? Well, maybe, but uh, it, it kind of looks like it. You know, remember, you're right at resistance too, right? And I know I'm getting a little bit off topic, but. When I see a three-way move like that, I mean, you don't get any better than that. That's that's what we look for, right? You see an impulse, look for a three-wave pullback, right? It doesn't have to break the low, especially if it breaks the top, right? This is a flat. And the reason it's a flat is because it's kind of like when someone says, oh, I bought this thing at a yard sale and I, for 10 bucks and I sold it for 10 bucks. So it was a wash. Like it was a wash, you know what I mean? So think of a wash like a flat, right? It was, I, I, I didn't earn anything, I didn't lose anything, it was like I was flat, right? So that's kind of what a flat is, um, if that makes sense. So let's keep going, file coin. I might have to look at this one a little bit more strongly after I'm done with the video here, because that does look very bullish. Look at, you got a shoulder, you got a head, I don't own any of this. I've been looking at it, um, but I just don't really have the entry. I, I wasn't paying attention yesterday. I was looking at other things. But anyway, let's look at Filecoin. We're just trying to get a general idea of what the market's doing. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is bu bullish. So if Bitcoin's already at its 702, then there's a then yesterday we were saying probably ABC. Unless we can impulse up there, have a nice setup, we can break out, right? But the, what I'm trying to say here is Filecoin, Theta, the other coin, IMX, right? They all look like what? They need to come back higher into the retracement levels. If that means, if, if it looks like they need to get higher, right? Like, for example, like a three-way move to the upside. That's at bare minimum. Even if this is bearish, even if we're going down, even if we're in a bear market, you still need a retracement. You still need a little bit of a bounce to then continue the trend back lower, right? Which means we probably have more upside to go, probably coming back to this level. And then from there, we reevaluate. So, you know, point A point B, point C, right? Where are we at? We're at point B. What does that mean? It's good, still decent buying opportunities, dollar cost averaging, right? Um, yesterday, um, 
you know, big volatile day to the downside. Um, but that's what it expects, right? When you come up to this resistance, boom, 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 right? Boom, 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 right? I mean, what, what, what's going to happen next? I mean, you can fall through the floor very easily, but statistically, probability, you bounce this trend line, you're going to come back at least to the middle point. If we can't get through the middle point, which, that means we can't get to the upper part of the channel, which means you're probably going to come down. So the, the problem with this chart is not just Filecoin. I'm talking about most of them, right? Let's go back. I'll go back to beta just to be fair. Um, the problem with it is you're sort of stuck in this thing here, right? And I don't know if this is an A, a B, a C. That's what I'm thinking. It is, but that doesn't mean we're gonna come down now, right? It could be more complex. For example, one, two, three, four, five. You have three up, right? You have three down, you just can't really see. And then you can get another three up. So the whole thing becomes five, A, one, two, three, B, and then we come down and then we go. So that's kind of what I'm still thinking. And the reason I'm thinking that, right, is because that would complete this b base right down here. We need to build the base, right? So there's still more oscillation involved within this range. Now, the longer we go sideways here without breaking either direction, the, the bigger the base gets, the more likely it is to maybe you not have to come back down to this lower part of the range, right? So we'll go back to Bitcoin for a minute. So if this is the case and we zoom out, this could be, right, what, what we've been discussing. Let me go to the, let's go to the 10 hour chart here. Okay, we got the bull market support band. We're doing good. The EMA ribbon, everything looks good. Um, the sequential is okay. So we have three down, three up, five down. You have an impulse, three-way pullback. Impulse, three-way pullback. That's a one, two, one, two. And now you, this is the third wave. If, if that's what that means. If this is the third wave, then what is this? That's the first wave of the third wave, right? So one, two, three, four, five. That whole thing is wave three. And where we are is like right there. Right there. So this thing could be, I mean, heck, it could be breaking out over the weekend. It could be breaking out tomorrow into its third wave. Now, I believe that once we hit 70, 72K, like I've been saying, uh, that 70, 71, 72 area, once we get up there, I mean, you can see there's a lot of resistance in here, right? So there's kind of like three levels that are very close to each other. So if we can get a big push to the upside and hit, you know, or not too big, but 71, 72, we get up here and then we can flag out a little bit. Um, it's going to look more like that this is that the, the first one, two, three, four, five, the first wave isn't finished, right? So what I mean by that is look at this. This is kind of where, look at this. It's still, look at it. It's still pumping, guys. Look at that. That's a monster candle right there. That tells me, okay, this is, oh, wow. Okay, so this is not a B wave, I, I don't think. We just smashed to the 702, extreme impulse to the upside. You had a three-way pullback. You had a one-two, you back-tested the top, and now you're just ripping. Okay, so this is probably not a B wave like we talked about yesterday. This is 
because of its impulsive nature. That's why you got to wait. You can't say, oh, okay, we're going to be wave and we got to see. No, you got to wait and see how the wave goes up, right? So this is why I recommend subscribing because it's a day by day by day operation, right? But the macro still hasn't changed at all, right? The macro is still a fourth wave. We're still expecting a further upside. So what this could be, what I think this is, is wave one, wave two, wave three. You have an ABC pullback, wave four. And now we're going into wave five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get up here. 71, 72, 73, even 74K is possible. We get up into this fifth wave and then we start flagging out. Right, and that will be our wave two. So, um, there you go. So one, two, three, four, five. So all of this, let me just take it off. Um, actually, one second. Let me, uh, why is it? Let me just remove this so we have a much clearer, okay. One, I can't stand people's charts that have, that have millions of lines on them. There's, it's so cluttered. I like clean, basically like bare naked charts so I can see exactly what I'm what I need to see so um, and what I'm trying to show you so we have a one two three four and it looks like we're getting five this is the this is the idea so this is wave one so all of that's wave one of wave three okay so then we flag out in here okay and then wave two Hopefully we flag out, right? If we hit the top and we start impulsing, that's then we got to change our mind, right? The idea here is you get five waves up, you want an ABC correction. So we get an ABC correction. Um, we back test, you know, these these areas in here, right? And then what do we do? We go up into the third wave, the third of the third, which is going to be one of the biggest waves in crypto. It's going to be the biggest, I mean, the, the third wave and the fifth wave are the biggest waves. And when you're talking the third wave of the third wave is, is even, I mean, it's, it's really, really big, right? So um, I'll give you an example right here. Here's a good example. So here's, look at this check this out one two three four five same thing right and then look what we did flagging out and then what did we do we had one two uh let's see here uh looks like all of this is the fifth or all of this is the third so this would be one second here so that's actually i gotta zoom in so we can see a little bit better so here's the third wave and this is one two of the third and this is third of the third look how big that thing is that comes after we flag out and then we get the rest of the wave and then we flag out again and then we get the fifth wave which is sometimes even bigger look at that so if we translate that i'm just you know all waves are sort of kind of the same in in some instances Getting a little bit, so I wouldn't buy Bitcoin right now, right? I mean, this thing came up quite a bit. We're back at, you know, we're, we're still in these levels here. If I'm going to buy, I want to see an ABC pull. I want to see a little bit of a pullback here, right? I'm not going to buy things that go straight up, even though it can, t can keep going or whatever, right? I mean, that's just what it is. Should have bought before, right? So, um, but anyways, the third wave, right? If this is a uh, wave um, one, right? We're in wave one. So one, two, three, four, five, right? And then we flag out, right? And then we go up wave one, wave two, wave three of three, remember that big wave, and then four and then five. And that would be wave three. So it is my opinion that this is still wave one. Okay. Now, here's the thing. If we get rejected in here, 
and we come back down like this, then that means wave one is already finished. And wave three is about to finish, is about to go, right? So one, two, three, big, big wave coming soon. So the difference is, um, the difference is we get up here to 71, 72K, we flag out and then we go. Or we have an ABC like this and then we go. So are we flagging out now or are we gonna break the high and flag out later? Either way, they're both pointing to the upside. So hopefully you guys are, your bags are packed and ready to go. Um, but for me, I'm not buying. Yesterday was a buying opportunity. Today is kind of a wait and see. Okay, so the four hour candle just opened and we can see the, yep, there it is. We can see it, it tagged the top. It's probably, uh, let's look at the small time frame. We can get a better view here. I mean, I, I think a pullback is warranted. There we go. We're pulling back. And you see all these wicks here? See all those wicks? I mean, you got a bunch of them in here. Chances are that this candle or the or some candle after it is going to come down and wick. You can even see this wick right here. You see that the top of this wick? So let me just put that right there. Right? And then I'll put this one right there. So that would be a little bit of a zone. And if I pull a retracement of this wave, let's see. You say, oh, your videos are, are kind of long. Well, this is, you know, we're, we're trying to learn here. You know, this is our money. This is everything we've ever worked for. It requires TLC. It requires attention. And uh, so look at that. Um, that brings us right around the 382. I'd probably even say even a little lower. Let's look at the, the other wicks down here. Um, or even better, the order blocks themselves, which is right about there. So between those lines, that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking for. Maybe a little bit of a, like I said, a, we wick down here. If we can wick off of it and then kind of consolidate we need to keep the momentum going because if we have if this turns out to be a doji and the next one becomes a doji then that means we're stuck which means we got to come down which is okay it's okay but uh you know just be cautious um so the thing is is what i'm looking for now that we had this big impulse what I'm looking for is can we flag out in here? Can we get an ABC correction? Or even better, let's keep going, right? Um, so that's pretty much it with Bitcoin. Uh, so let's go to the let's go to the monthly chart because I haven't looked at it in a little bit. Oh yeah, look at that. That's pretty impressive. I mean, you can see we're just wailing down. Look at that. This is flagging out, flagging out. And now we're breaking out. And you see that wick down there. We wicked off of it. So we got seven days left. Remember, the, the later part of October is more bullish than the beginning part of October. And it's definitely showing it's its seasonality, especially the fourth year of the election after the happening. That's usually the time when things start getting exciting. The problem with it is we have like some of the macro environments like, we're, you know, the labor market, inflation, you know, things like that, and the economy, uh, interest rates. I mean, all those things play a role. But at the end of the day, you know, people are de-dollarizing, right? You have the United States dollar when you go buy, you know, whatever, food, 
gas, it's taking more of these dollars. So people realize their dollars are becoming much, uh, much more depreciated. So you take your dollars and you buy things that are continuing to go up in value. And uh, it's a race, right? I mean, the central banks, they, do they care about dollars? No. They care about real assets like me and you, right? I mean, I don't think the Fed is out there buying Bitcoin. Maybe they are, but um, they're definitely buying stocks. So to, to keep everything propped up, to keep everything moving along, right? It's like they're trying to oil a machine with WD-40. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it might not, it might work for a little bit, but it ain't going to work for long. Um, so anyway, monthly chart looks really bullish really bullish weekly chart look at that bullish hammer candle right there so that's different than a doji look right um yeah we, we if if it ends like that it's it's cool and remember look at that it, it actually did exactly what we talked about so remember how big this weekly candle was when it closed i said typically the candle after it, after you break out with a big green candle, typically what happens is the following candle or maybe another candle after that will come down and retest this candle 50%, right around that halfway mark. And that's exactly what we did. And then the cool part about it is we actually wicked right back off of it. So that's very, very important. Let's keep moving on. Every time I upload a video, it's giving me problems. I had to re-upload uh, re my video a couple times. It keeps saying untitled video. Maybe they don't like my theories on the election. I don't know. Um, YouTube is just not really acting right. I'm not sure what's going on, but they're giving me a lot of problems uploading my videos. Um, XRP, nothing really special. As, at the moment, we're just still continuing to go sideways. The idea with XRP is this is an impulse, this is an A, this is a B, this is a C. You see the flat right there? We're flagging out, right? So could we hit the low on the bottom part? Yes, but if Bitcoin breaks out, it's less likely. Ultimately, we're gonna break out, I think. So this could be a truncated fifth, maybe, or we have one, two, three, four, maybe we get five, right? So remember, this is either finished and we're building a base and we're gonna go into a retracement, or this is one, this is uh, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we go to the retracement levels. So, but in the meantime, what are we expecting? Well, um, if I zoom in pretty close, um, there's the whole move. Right? What do we see? Well, to me, I see um, a three way move to the top or an ABC, right? You have one, two, three, four, five. That's A. Right? You have five there, A. That's B. Whoops, that's not right. That's C. My bad. A, B, C. And then you have, so this is a three way move, right? So what do you see now? You see another three-way move. So if you have three up and you have three down, what could you expect after that? You can expect a monster five up or three up. One, two, three, four, five. And it becomes what? A bigger three-way move. One, two, three. So that's kind of what I'm thinking if Bitcoin can successfully break out. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Unless there's a little bit of like for example bitcoin can break the fifth wave right watch so let's say okay so here's bitcoin let's say it breaks out and then xrp gets to the retracement level 
and then we go down into the C wave. And then XRP can either break the low and then go like in a diagonal one, two, three, four, five, ending diag, or um, if Bitcoin breaks out and we have we start having a you know an ABC, then obviously XRP gets to the retracement level and then as once bitcoin breaks out as it comes down that's when we kind of go into reaccumulation here and then bitcoin continues xrp continues and that's kind of what i'm thinking here i think uh that's that's definitely in the cards so we just have to see right i'll pop in here on tomorrow maybe and we'll see what what what's going on so as we go into the weekend, volatility seems to slow down. So, you know, it's it's really the meat and potatoes of crypto is uh, really like Tuesday through Friday or even Monday through Thursday. So you really only get three solid volatile days with crypto, it seems like. The rest is just kind of like consolidation. So that's it for XRP. I mean, it looks bullish right now. Right, if we look even smaller here, let's go to the 15 minute chart. I mean, you can see, just like with the rest of the market, right, we had a big impulse. This is a five wave move. So, but this looks like a three wave move. So it looks like we're gonna get something like that. So here's my assessment on XRP. We have a big wave one. Right, let's get an ABC pullback and then keep going. That's kind of how I'm seeing it. And you can look, you can see this doesn't look like a one, a two, and we're going up for a three. You can see, right, you can see what it's doing. It's having that bearish looking channel towards it, right? So as Bitcoin pulls back, either this is gonna go down into reaccumulation, we're gonna break out, or this is going to be an A, a B, a C, and then we break out. So we'll see if it if it pops the high, then it could be an expanded flat, right? So, but I don't think this is just going to rip. I think you know it, it needs a little bit of consolidation. You can see a couple, a little bit of a pattern here, kind of like a cup. A little bit of a handle you break out you flag it out again but now you got some dojis in here maybe we wane down a little bit and then we could pop the high right but give me some kind of pullback in here um all right let's keep moving on let me go back to theta so when i look at theta right what did i say expecting a retracement down here we had a completed crashing structure. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we had plenty of waves to the downside. Um, so when you look at theta, what do you see? I mean, I see a clearly identifiable five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. That's a wave one. This looks like A. And what it looks like to me is we're gonna come up, pop the high for a B and then come down one, two, three, four, five for a C. Or if we can go into more reaccumulation, it could be maybe a running flat. So yeah, it kind of gives me that corrective look. So let's go. Um, what is it doing right now? One, two, three. I mean, I would really like to break this top here to complete the ABC, right? Let's get up here and then come down and then go later. So this is the 15 minute chart. So by the time you, by the time YouTube allows me to upload the video, you know, like for example, I, I didn't get the video uploaded till like five hours after, and I was looking at the small time frames, and it was like basically 
you know things change really quick i want i want you guys to get the information as soon as possible um so but anyways another thing on the four hour we break out i mean we we pump to the upside and you can see we come down and then we're wicking we're wicking we're wicking this tells me we're holding support in here which is likely means we got to get a little bit higher right how high can we go well if we put on the retracement levels I mean, we didn't even hit the 50 i would say about a dollar 32 dollar 35 um so that's what i'm thinking maybe maybe by tonight or maybe tomorrow we can see something like that and if we get up there and it's like okay well we're still in this thing right that's pretty big and usually it's gonna work its way up and break out or it's gonna be a sea leg drop and then work its way out um so you guys already know my thoughts on that let's let's keep looking here tia now tia ah man it's it's looking good you know we got a impulse we got a three-way pullback and we're still kind of holding we're, we're right here in the resistance level right i was kind of expecting a little bit more to be honest but with all do with all fairness tia didn't really have a big drop so for example when you look at theta right you had a big drop which allowed the bounce right and that bounce was not so much but let's see we bounce about yeah you know almost seven percent there over seven percent right so for tia you didn't really you know we're just kind of meandering here so let's look much much closer and see so it was a little bit of trickery here and one of my orders got stopped out i was looking at this it was looking good um we had this three-way pullback it's looking good but then what we did is we came up we took the top and i had i had i think i had my stop here we broke below on one of the trades it, it, it took it out i was kind of like a trailing stop loss because i wasn't sure because it just seemed a little bit weird to me. But now that I look a little bit later, it still looks weird, to be honest. Um, you kind of got this cupping here, cup, right? It just seems like it needs a little bit of a pullback and then go higher, right? Cup, handle, go. I mean, that's just kind of what it appears. But I'm not really trading the this, this smaller time frames as much um just for fun a little bit there and there but uh there was much better opportunities because the way i looked at it yesterday tia didn't really have a drop right so i'm thinking okay when the rest of the market is having is more fragile right when it bounces that could be when tia breaks out because it didn't really flinch um so that still has not yet to be proven yet um, but it's still holding its shape. It still looks really good. And you can even argue that we broke out a little bit here. So if I put a downward resistance line, and let me try to make it as perfect as I can. There you go. So it doesn't look like it wants to hold it though, honestly. It looks a little bit... Uh, I don't know it just doesn't i don't like that right there so we'll see how that plays out um the best thing it can do is kind of build a base in here right uh maybe like an inverse head and shoulders or ascending triangle or, or something because i was looking at this this could be a descending triangle it could still be one right and it drops low it, it could drop to the downside um because why would it drop to the downside what what would make it do that well if you look at the four hour this could be a b wave 
right? So we have an A, and then we have a three-way move up for B, and now we're stuck in the retracement levels, so we can either go down into reaccumulation and break out, or we can go into a bigger C wave and break out, A, B, C, right? Hopefully that's not what's going on. I think um, because of how big this structure is, you don't really need too much more downside, I don't think. Um, but you got that nice inverse head and shoulders look. And here's the thing, we're flagging out, right? If we were, if we were at the top, for example, if this is the run up and then like the run up, here's your A wave, here's your A wave. And then we have a three wave move to the top. And then we started going up like this. I would say, yeah, we're probably going to come down, but we're going down like this instead of going up, which is likely to break up. This one's likely to break down. So this is likely to break up, right? So cup handle, right? And that cup and handle is part of a right shoulder of this head and shoulders. So we're just battling the neckline in here. And this is a big area. I mean, we've been here and I'm not just, when I talk about a coin, I'm talking about all, most of them that are like this, right? Um, we've been here since June. So June, July, August, September, October, right? Going on November, that's almost six months. That's, a, that's pretty significant. So six months, right? So it makes sense that it's struggling here. But once it breaks out, that six month pressure holding that beach ball underwater is gonna really pop to the upside, right? So, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, what is this doing here? This had a pretty nasty drop. This might be an interesting opportunity. The problem is, is it's got too much downside risk. Like here's your back test level, right? So, but I, I expect once this thing bottoms, it's gonna have a big retracement and that retracement can, I mean, look at that. That's a 30, 40% retrace if we can get it. Um, yeah, it looks, you know, it looks decent right here have a little bit of a double bottom, kind of holding your own a little bit, looks okay. I'm just not sure if this is completed though. I mean, I guess you can say A, B, I'm not gonna even try to count that right now uh, for time purposes. Um, let's keep moving along. ICP, oh yeah, look at ICP. Look at that. This, oh wow, this this reminds me totally of XRP. Look, watch this. So XRP is on the bottom, and just to kind of show you where we are here, just let me try to make it bigger here. Um, you can see this is the area I'm I'm kind of referring to. You can see how we came down, we built a base in here, and it was. And people look at it like, oh, it's just consolidating, but it's actually doing something, right? So this is five down. Um, and then you kind of go one, two, three, four, five up in a diag. And then it looks like this is an ABC or this is a running flat here. So anyways, building a base, but let's look at it side by side. And now it's a little bit different, but more so it's pretty similar so a couple different things right one thing you can say is like okay we hit the low hit the low pop to the upside back down pop to the upside back down and then you kind of have like one two three one two three back down back down back up back up then down then down then pop up Go sideways, pop up. Oh, look at this. Pop up, go sideways. What comes next? Big, big, big breakout. What comes next? Maybe a big breakout, right? So look at that. Perfect. Uh, let me screenshot it. 
All right, there we go. It's kind of my ugly drawings there, but there we go. So another thing, though, another way you can look at it is look at this. How um, you can see this one came down and it hit the low right away. This one took a little bit longer, but there's your low right there, right? So if that's if we can do it a different way. Uh, like let's say all of this is your downside move, all of that's your downside move. Then you have like one, two, three, four, five, right? Maybe, I mean, it looks like five there, but not really. Uh, or we'll say three, because it does have, we'll say one, two, three, one, two, three. See, I don't really like it this way, but you come down, you come down, you come back up, and then you drag down. You So, we should expect it to drag down and then pop the high, then go sideways, then go like that. So which one's it going to be the first way I said it or the second way? I mean, that's up for you to decide. But um, in my opinion, I mean, it, you know, depending, it just it just looks a little bit corrective, though, right now. It just seems like. If we can reset a little bit here, then maybe. But I don't think it's ready quite yet. I mean, you can see it as well over here. See how it drops down, kind of goes sideways? Drops down. I mean, actually, yeah. A little bit of a sideways move there. So, anyways. It's only the one hour chart, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, but you know, if it was going to do something like that, we, we could see a big push to the upside. The problem with that is it just doesn't seem like the base is big enough. You know, it just seems, by the way, this kind of looks like, uh, that, that altcoin we were just looking at this. If you look at the drop. See how it drops down like that? If you look at, where's that coin at that we were just looking at? This one. See the way that dropped? Kind of dropped, it kind of meandered about, then fell down. Let me go back to ICP again trying to do as quickly as I can. Um, was it ICP? Yeah. Yeah, it was on the daily. Yeah, so you could see it kind of the same type of look to it. Anyways. Um, yeah, what I was saying is it, it doesn't, it just seems like it's getting like squeezed in here, which is a good thing, but we more, more than that, we kind of want um, a base. So we go up to the downside, right? Maybe we come down, something like that. Um, so I'm just not sure if it's ready yet, right? I mean, if it's a triangle, ah, you know, usually triangles don't pop up in a wave two. You know, if this is a wave one and this is two, I mean, it's usually in a wave four, which is to the downside, right? So you have one, two, three, you have a fourth wave triangle, and then you hit five. And then you go into an A, B, C, and then you get C later, or or you get to a B wave, and then you get C later, then you go, which would take a long time, right? Um, and that could very well play out like that. But on the face of it, we see an impulse to the upside, Right, and I think this could be an A, B, C. It's a flat, and then we have a one, two, one, two. You know, we're kind of building a nest of one twos, and this thing's gonna rip. Right, you still have three here, so um, <clears throat> anything else? CRV, yeah, CRV just doesn't have the same look as the other charts. It doesn't look finished. I mean, 
it didn't even get me a good retrace here. Let's see. If I go to the smaller time frames. Um Yeah, it's not it's not giving me the warm and fuzzy feeling right now. It's going to have to prove itself a little bit more, which is kind of unfortunate because I was had a position in it. Uh, I still do, but, you know, I really want to see um, this come back up into a retracement because it's still possible that this is not finished. Right, so if this comes down, A, B, C, right, but it's more like a W, X, Y. So we have three down, right? Um, so you have three down, three up, and then three down like that. So W, X, Y, then go. So there's your wave one, two, go. Unless this is finished we have one two three four five a b and then see one two three four five problem is the fourth is too big it just looks funny so it doesn't have that nice look to it as much and then another thing what really really is bearish is it looks like a descending triangle so that's bearish right so if this is a descending triangle then probably going to have more downside so we'll see about that um what else so when you look at something like imx right you got your little retracement here maybe this turns into a bigger retracement a b c and then we get c later and go so A, B, C, that's kind of what I'm thinking for the whole market is that we still need to pop the high, right? Like, let's look at SHIB. Yeah, so same thing, like A, either this is going to be a big C wave and then we get C, I mean a big B wave. So A, complex B, then C, go, right? Or simply A, B, C go so is this going to be complex that's the thing right because i'm very bullish on the whole thing i just you know i just feel like this has to flag out more see you built a base here you shot up to the upside impulse and now you need to flag out at this resistance but when you look at the flag we don't have we only have one two we need three Right? I mean, that's just what it looks like. Um, Filecoin. Yeah, just super, super tight in here. So, I don't know. It feels like this could be A, B, C. And we break down, get everybody super, super bearish, and then go. It's kind of how I'm looking at it here. Right? Because... This is the base I want right here. You see how it's flat and perfect? This is more like triangular, which means it's not really finished yet. Um, usually you don't get triangles on the bottom. You get triangles on the top. If you get triangles on the bottom, that means you still got more down. So this was Wyckoff. Boom, 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 boom. Go. Something like that. So that, sort of that M shape. This could be Wyckoff, but I think it needs to come down a little bit, then go, right? Axelar. Seems like, seems like it needs a correction. Matic. I mean, Matic hit the low. I mean, it could be over. It could be done, right? We flushed the low. We took the low. It could be done. I mean, Matic could be a good buy. 
honestly. I mean, because Maddox the only one that actually took the low. I mean, technically, yeah, it did. It did. It did take the low, right? So let's go to. So for example, if we translate that to like, um, let's go to theta and translate it. That's as if A, B, C are one, two, three, four, five. That's as if theta did something like that. So imagine theta's down here. I mean, that would be an extraordinary buy, right? But Matic, you know, that's what Matic did. So um, not to say there's not more downside to go, but, you know, we, we'll have to look at the subwaves in there. But I think that should do it for this video. Can look at Sui. And it's, it, 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 I wouldn't buy it. It just seems too high to me. Um, let's look at total three. So we're still above the channel, so we can get rid of that. Um, it just, you have a drop, right? And then you have this. So it just seems like you need this. A, B, C, right? I mean, that's just kind of what it looks like. Or what this could do is it could come down and then come up in a bigger B wave and then get C later on. But the fact that it's already so big, right? Because you, you could say you could say it's a diag. One, two, three, four, five, right? And then we need to come down A, B, C. If we get something like that, if we get an A, B, C move down like that, then it could look like higher upside cup handle, right? So... The only thing I'm worried about is this big trend line here. We're, we're, we're on a very steep trend line here. Very steep. So if this breaks, it could be pretty big. And we could technically come down to the lows again. And build a bigger base, right? So, you know, filling in those gaps on that base. Um, but all in all, right? If this really wanted to, again, just because it looks like that doesn't mean that's what's going on. Because we don't necessarily have to. Because if this, again, if this is a diag, one, two, three, four, or five, and then you get a, just a little tiny ABC, could be enough to break the top. And what you have, guys, is an ascending triangle. Very bullish. Boom, 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 boom. So... Yeah, I mean, looks very bullish. Just look at this. I'm just not sure if we have to flush that low and then go. So, uh, Dogecoin. Dogecoin's flagging out. So Dogecoin, so a lot of the market, like let's put up Theta. Here's a good learning experience as well. Okay, so Theta, and not only Theta, but a lot of the other coins came down and now they're sort of consolidating. Doge came down, but look what it did. It had a one, two, three, now it looks like four, now it looks like five. So that was the end. So see what I mean? This is very, very important. If Dogecoin is telling the story, then that means like um, if we go to, let's take another coin here. Engine, for example, like this could be like billowing up, billowing up, billowing up to break out, you know, and you're never going to get that C wave. It looks corrective. And Elliott traders like myself are looking at that and thinking, oh, this looks like a retracement. It's corrective. It needs to flush the low. But if you look at other coins like Doge, it had a more of an impulse. So what's telling the story here? Maybe these are just being sneaky, right? 
yesterday's title was watch out for this sneaky move and that's kind of what i'm referring to um let me which coin was i just looking at dogecoin so yeah you know you got this three wave three-way pullback here i mean it could get more complex right but it looks like a fourth wave to me which means more upside and if that's going to have more upside then that means probably others will as well but if this is the top i, I don't think it is i mean i got one two three i need four and five so i feel like there's more upside so if we translate that to theta then we need a retracement at least Right. The, I just don't like that. Like I would rather, you know, we, we do have this three wave move. One, two, three, four, five. We do have a three wave move. So if this is one, two, three, four, five, then hey, so be it. Right. And that's that's basically where I'm lining up to be. But I do see other coins that don't give me that impression. So. We'll see what happens. Um, all in all, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when in doubt, zoom out. At the end of the day, where are we going? Back here. That's where we're going. If we have to take the low to get there, okay. If we have an ABC to get there, okay. If we just go up now, okay, whatever. That's where we're going. We're building a base. We need a retracement. So, hopefully... Uh, that helps a little bit. And uh, just one more look at Bitcoin before we sign off. I got I got to clean up this list here. I got too much going. I know gold had a big push to the upside. Look at gold. It's still flying. Peter Schiff is just laughing. Ha ha, Bitcoin sucks. Gold is the cool one. When in reality, gold has done literally nothing for decades. Not to knock on gold, but the DXY, oh, look at that. DXY is coming to a head here. Okay, so this, this is adding something here. So you see this three-way move, right? It kind of gives you the impression that we're going to get something like this and then go down. But if that's the case, you could see the doji here. So if this has to come down in the meantime, guess what? Bitcoin and crypto is going to go up, potentially, right? So anyway, Bitcoin dominance. Oh, look at dominance. It's still pumping. I know Benjamin Cohen's just jumping up and down. I can't, you know, just that's his whole thing is Bitcoin dominance. And I respect it. The market cap, two-day chart. Look at that bullish hammer candle on the two day with three hours left to go. Let's look at the 30 minute chart. So, yeah, we're still impulsing. The, the, the only thing I would say is look at this. Boom, boom. You kind of got a little bit of a rising wedge in there. I mean, obviously you can do that, but likely if we do, you're going to get a short, a short setup. Now, um, we totally cleared this level and we're just hanging out above it. I mean, that shows bullishness, right? So let's see how we react in here. Um, and let's see how that translates to the altcoins. Um, silver, on the other hand, hasn't been kicking butt as much as gold has. I still I have a bunch of silver that one day I want to take some profits if it ever does anything no i'm just kidding i i think silver is going to be one of the best out there it just takes a long time man i mean this is i mean i was born in 1992 so way the hell over here so that's 32 years um and we've had a massive bull run, one, two, three, four, five. So my fear is that this is an A, a B, and a C, 
and then we go up sometime in 2030. I mean, that would be just horrific, right? But yeah, you know, that's what I mean. So I don't think so. I think what this is is a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways breakout. And where, how high are we going with silver? I mean, probably like seventy-five, eighty dollars. Uh, definitely higher than fifty. If I, if I, man, if I gotta zoom out even more, I gotta go to like the six-week chart just to even look at this thing. So, um, if I take a fib from the top of here to the bottom. That 161A comes in, yeah, 75, 80 bucks. So, look at that. They're both sort of lined up with each other. Um, up to about 120. I know Bix Weir says $600 silver. I just don't see it. I, I, I mean, I would love for a $600 silver. And I, we might even get it. Because if you look at this cup and handle here, let's see what the measured move is. I know I've done it before. That puts us actually at, look at that, about $600. So maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe so. Um, I mean, you cannot deny silver has the biggest cup and handle in human history. Let me repeat that again. Silver has the biggest cup and handle, not in crypto or stocks. I'm talking about in human history. There's no cup and handle bigger than silver. This thing was back before a lot of you guys were born. I mean, the top of this was 1980, right? So 1980, I mean, that's how long it's been. So you have a big cup and you have a handle. And it's working its way up to the handle. So I would like to put gold. It'll probably be another video, but I would like to put gold side by side. If you're interested in gold and silver, let me know. I'll do a video. Um, but this thing looks like it could be a generational type of situation. So um, anyways, um, just... XRP versus Ethereum. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five. You got an impulse. Let's flag out. Let's keep going. Uh, the SEC appeal, bull crap. Remember, they did not appeal. XRP is not a security. They appealed something with Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse, right? So, I mean, honestly, they should just do us all a favor and pay the fine, right? Say, look, we don't want to appeal. We want to just move forward. What do you guys want? $100 million. Okay, here you go. No, hell no. I wouldn't do that. Um, but honestly, they need to figure something out because this is just ridiculous at this point. But all right, that'll do it for real, for real, for real this time. And uh, if you can hit that like, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you see this video and hopefully it doesn't take 1500 years to upload and I will catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.